Здравейте, добре дошли в канал на Headhunters Barbershop. Вие гледате вторият епизод на шоу Headhunter. Днес ние ще посетим а, голям професионалист, истински браснар, Хотой в Хотойс Барбершоп. Alright, so I'm gonna wash me. I'm gonna wash your hair first, alright? Okay. You just sit tight and What is this place? What is Kotoi Barbershop? No, Kotoi's barbershop is uh, is a small I like to consider a classic barbershop. I mean as you can see it's not uh, I didn't choose a very modern approach I mean okay it's modern because there's a very you know uh, big hype around barbershops right now and you know everybody's trying to make something you know more rustic or more uh, different okay. you know yeah. so uh, I, I chose to make something that is a bit more classic because I consider myself as being a bit of a classic person so the barbershop you know it's a combination between uh, maybe who I am and who I want to be How you decide to be a barber? The first time I cut somebody's hair, it was a very long time ago. Okay. It had nothing to do with barbering, right? It was just me and my my my, my best uh, childhood friend. That you know, one day we were we were at his place, and he said, "Man, I, I need a haircut. Just cut my hair." And I said, "What? I never cut hair." And he said, "No, no, no just do it. Here's the scissor. You know, like a kitchen scissor, just normal scissor." And of course, I did a crappy job. So let's say that that was the first, uh, that was my first encounter with cutting hair, but uh, after that, with time, the other things I did, like, as, uh, like for money or for, uh, as a hobby, as a passion, I always managed to find time to do a haircut every now and then, and for a very, very long time I cut hair with a, a body groomer. You know how it is. It's it's actually a beard trimmer for guys at home, which has no professional. I know uh, how it is because I'm a barber, but ex but guys don't know. You exactly. So yeah, it's it. it's it's crappy. It's crappy to cut a hair on somebody's head with a trimmer that is made to to trim your. <laughs> you understand? It's crappy. It doesn't work. It's I mean it works, but it's bad. Let's say that around um, 2012. Like seven years ago, I, um, this is a very long story, That's, I'm gonna try to make it short. My dad was like, listen, there's, a, there's this like hairdressing school in the center of Bucharest, uh, which wasn't a barbering school, it was a hairdressing school. What was the name of the, the school? The name of the school is Christine Valmi. So everybody, and me included, I said, man, I want to become a hairstylist. That's where the money is, that's where the fame is, that's where, you know, People travel, they get to, you know, cut hair for magazines, for videos, and I saw, because um, I was still a dancer back then, I saw what type of, uh, of people work in this um, area, let's say. When I went to commercials or when I went to music videos, I saw the people, you know, very stylish, you know, a bit weirdish looking, you know, with uh, haircuts that weren't classics let's say you know yeah. for, for that time yeah. for that time and uh, I said okay this is the money these guys like have a lot of jobs I'm gonna start doing this and uh, why I'm saying that I, I couldn't call myself a barber still because uh, I was in a school that taught uh, long hair haircuts for women um, because the school was very old, all the clientele that came for free haircuts and you know we did the hair dyeing and you know the perm? Yeah of course. I did I hated it man. <laughs> so I had to do I had to do finger like finger haircuts, okay. you know, scissors over fingers okay. and perm to 60 plus year old ladies. Because those were, that was the clientele to that school, you know? That old lady was prestigious, all the, you know, Kukwana, how do you call the hen, 
Yeah. You know, going that most of them like to me, and this is not, you know, this is the truth. You know, I think some of them like lived on the streets because, you know, they were getting it for free. So they knew that every Thursday and Friday they were going there. The, the students were practicing, but uh, I, I, I realized that I couldn't work 10 hours, 10, 12 or 8 to 12 hours with, a day with grandmas, yeah. with grandmas, man. So. Oh, my dream, you know, that dream in my head that I'm gonna be a hairstylist working with hot women all the time, you know, supermodels who catwalking and shit like that. It was, it exploded. I was like, F I'll never become this. Like, how the f am I gonna do this? Of course, all the knowledge that I got from the school, it was uh, amazing. Because, uh, you know, uh, you still learn sections, transitions, uh, angles, uh, the uh, basics. Graduation. Yeah, you learn basics. So, okay, I don't, um, I didn't know how to fade hair because it was obviously a, a women a hairdressing course, but I had knowledge about hair. Mm -hmm. What types of hair there are, uh, diseases, uh, anything, you know, facial shape. It's kind of the same, you know, like it's the same. You have it's like round shape, diamond shape, square shape. No matter if you're a woman or you're a, or you're a guy. Okay, what about the barbering? How you ah, and the barbering? You know, I mean, you uh, know, to be a man hairdresser. And what was your what was your first barber shop and when? If you so remember. I guess I started. I guess I started uh, really uh, putting effort into my uh, my knowledge and my skills regarding barbering around uh, 2014. So after I finished the hairdressing school, I kept going in into the barbering, you know, and I started because again in that time I don't know if they were literally barbering schools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in Romania to go and somebody to teach you uh, You know like you see all the old timers doing a classic shave uh, or a, a Basic classic haircut everything was you know mid to long length and what was short it was just Maybe undercuts. Okay. Like when I was a kid and I went to do it, it was just undercut and like what I have now, but with the hair like falling down in the front and cut under. I continued just learning by myself. And um, I started uh, buying, let's say, more professional tools <laughs> to, to, to skip the crappy trimmer. And I bought myself, and you know it, the Moser uh, Primate. Of course, yeah. I said, okay, this is the best. This is what I wanted to, to, to talk about. Okay. There's a, you know, because you're a barber. There is a very big struggle. And I guess in every artist, because I consider us artists. Not because we can do haircuts, but because we can um, adapt haircuts. We can freestyle something that is not following any rules. Uh, for somebody and make it look good. This is why I think we're artists. Not because we, we can cut hair. So, uh... Absolutely right, my friend. Because there are a lot of new barbers which don't know anything. They work like a few months and they mechanic. think... Just mechanic. Yes, they think that the art is about the mechanic. But guys, the first step is uh, education <laughs> in the beginning and after i don't know a few years okay one year you can be an, an artist please guys don't forget about it <laughs> you know how it is i mean i believe that it it comes uh, it comes by itself man because mm -hmm. at the beginning okay i wanted to be an amazing hairdresser right but I couldn't because I didn't have the skills. How to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you're first, you know, a bit lefty, you cut like a bit with two left hands and it's rough and you see lines, your face don't look good, you look at the final shape and it's crooked, you don't know why. You don't know what you did to make it not look good. So, uh, I guess that when you, you know, when you work and you cut and you cut and you cut and you cut, the more you practice, the better you become, no matter what you do. Of course. You but, know? but barbering is there are people, man, there it's are... all about bad, bad experience, you know? Exactly. Uh, yes. My advice, if it was to, you know, to communicate this to, to, the, um, to the new upcoming barbers, would be to uh, not hurry.
Man, and you know what I, what I like very much about barbering? It's good information, man. Like, you talk to people, the best thing in the world, like, Google, Facebook, everything, man. Today, I have uh, one guy from India, one guy from London, one guy that's from Alaska, and one guy that's from Australia. In Sofia, it, it's random, it happens. No matter where I go, right, what I want to know about anything, I find it way better information to get it one-on-one -on -one from a guy that lives there than just going on Facebook and seeing some opinions. I want to know how Australia is. And I have a guy that's from Australia. Man, what the f*** is it in your country? I've never been there. I will probably never go there. I think koalas and kangaroos are amazing out of this planet. I would love to hug one once in my life. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe not. But tell me, how is it? Oh, mate. And he starts telling you. Politically. Everything. What about the barber in Romania? Because Koto is from Romania. He... Are you from Bucharest? I'm from Bucharest. Born and raised. I've been all over the country, but yeah, I've lived um, only in Bucharest. It's, it's my hometown. I just want to ask about the barbering culture, when it starts to reborn, you know? Because uh, everybody said that uh, barbering is not a new culture, it's reborn culture. What do you think about it? Is it reborn or, it, or is it new culture? I can, I can easily compare both cities because to me they're not that different. Regarding barbering, here in Eastern Europe, I would, I, I would always say that it came back. It's a culture that, you know, it's been around since Egyptian times, even longer, as far as we know, right? So, um, it can be a new culture. It's a culture that, yes, changed and evolved during this extremely long period of time, but I don't think it's something that, uh, um, that it's new. And especially the traditional uh, barbering, which consists of literally short classic man haircuts, Mm -hmm. and shades mm -hmm. and of course beard trims because also the beard culture came back right you have uh, uh, nations that never got beard culture out of their uh, lives you know you have the uh, the northern people they had a beard in their culture forever Probably. around us you know especially Bucharest with uh, uh, you know in which especially in the inter uh, uh, the time between the wars it was a very classic city, very classy okay. as well. You know, with uh, everybody was wearing either a top hat or a round hat, three piece suit with vest, tie, uh, nice shoes. Like it was Paris one on one. Mm -hmm. People mostly had mustaches that were very nice groomed <laughs> but very nice shaved mm -hmm. okay. or fully shaved. Always with a comb in your pocket. Because when you take the hat off at the table, you have to style your hair, right? So it was a very classy city. Днес е моят бръснер беше Котой, в Котой с Барбрашоп. Това беше много откровено, това беше много готино и може да прицените моят стайл сега. Котой, благодаря ти много, брат. И аз благодаря. А, търсете Котой, търсете неговата бръс. Нарица, имаш Facebook или нещо? Имам Facebook, имам Instagram, имам вебсайт. Какво искате? Момче, има всичко. Заповядайте при него, благодаря ти и приятен ден. И на вас, благодаря много.